if this becomes a reality, it could mean that same-sex couples could be able to one day have biological children of their own. We could basically just take a blood sample and turn those blood cells first into stem cells and then ultimately into viable human eggs. That might sound like science fiction, but it's a very real process called IVG, a breakthrough that has the potential to allow anyone unable to get pregnant for any reason to have biological children. So far, IVG has only been successfully performed in mice. However, a fast-growing and well-funded startup in Berkeley, California, is looking to make it a reality for a current generation of would-be parents. If this works, it could be one of the most significant technologies that are ever created. This is Just Might Work, a show about surprising solutions to our biggest problems. What is IVG? It's an acronym. You're not going to use that, are you? So IVG stands for in vitro gametogenesis. In vitro means in glass. Gametes are eggs and sperm. Genesis means creation of or birth of. So in vitro gametogenesis is making eggs and sperm outside of the body, inside a laboratory. This is Hank Greeley, a Stanford law professor who specializes in thinking about the consequences of exactly this kind of technology. What's so interesting about the potential for IVG is to be able to take skin cells, turn them into these induced pluripotent stem cells, which can become any cell type, and then build things from them. Build organs, build embryos, build eggs and sperm. So anyone who's not able to have biological children now could have their own kids with the arrival of IVG. People like same-sex couples, older people, and those experiencing infertility, which affects over 45 million couples worldwide. Some people say they can always adopt, they could use donor egg, donor sperm, people don't need to have genetic babies. And that's true, but many people really want to, and they suffer. Since all IVG would require is a simple blood sample, it could essentially end infertility. Or at least it would end infertility if someone figures out how to make it work in humans. Enter Matt Krisiloff, a tech investor and the CEO of Conception, a startup determined to make IVG a reality. And soon. I became super interested, really from a personal standpoint. I think it's a really great thing just to give more choice rather than there being hard biological restrictions in terms of how people are able to have children. Before conception, Chris Aloff led the research nonprofit at Y Combinator, one of the most successful startup accelerators in history. I was funding all sorts of interesting policy and scientific research, and there was a paper that came out of the lab in Japan where they had actually managed to do in vitro gametogenesis successfully in mice all the way to live healthy birth. Krisiloff visited IVG labs around the world, and while the research astounded him, he was disappointed in its slow pace and how under-resourced these projects seemed to be. I was getting answers from the academics that it would be 20, 30 year type of time frame. I just really believed that people were not approaching this the exactly correct way. Krisiloff decided to utilize his access to high profile tech investors and found two co-founders who were equally as dedicated to his vision, bioscientists Pablo Hurtado and Bianca Serres. I think personally, I'm being honest, I'm gay. The fact that I cannot have biological children uh, is always been a struggle for me. So this field gave me that hope. All three shared the same sentiment. To realize the dream of conception, it had to be taken out of academia and into the world of startups. I really feel like we've taken the approach of an engineering problem. If you just break it down into small enough buckets, then you can assemble a team where you can work on and isolate the key problems at each of those stages at the same time. Three years into their work, Conception staff has grown to 28 scientists, and their new estimate for when IVG will be ready is far more ambitious than when they started. Everything in our work is really oriented at this point around creating a proof of concept human egg. You can only take what the ovaries can produce. And so one of the huge challenges were like, how do you hijack the human body and get more cells, more eggs, more embryos? 
So these here are human-induced pluripotent stem cells. So you can take blood or skin cells and generate these beauties here. What's really exciting about these cells is that they can become almost any cell in the human body if you put them in the right conditions. These days I'm confident that within a couple of years, at least in a proof of concept way, uh, we should actually be able to have this in humans. Ethical and legal questions have always dogged fertility science. Who will have access to the technology? Will it bring on a generation of designer babies? The idea is we can edit the embryo's DNA in a way to give babies eh, basically superpowers. Give them the intelligence and the sports ability and the personality and so on. But that's not really even possible with IVG. At least, not yet. With IVG, you could make 100 embryos for a couple and tell the parents, OK, here's everything genetics can tell us about these 100 embryos. Now, that's still not designer babies, because you're still only working with what the parents have to give you. The choices IVG could offer to parents is one of the things Krisilov is most excited about. If we can generate unlimited egg cells and create a wide quantity of embryos, that would really open the door for genetic selection and even genetic editing for disease purposes one day. I think the timeline could be accelerated, but I don't think it should be. We really need to be confident that these artificially produced eggs and sperm don't lead to a vast increase in miscarriages and stillbirths. And that, I think, realistically, should take at least 10 years. After we have a proof of concept human egg, everything in the company will really shift more towards a optimization and safety uh, type of framework. So we'll be doing a lot of benchmarking of our embryos against uh, more traditional embryos. And then we'll also be doing animal testing. And we'll want to be creating animal offspring to make sure that these are safe and healthy too. Conception is optimistic that clinical trials in humans are possible within a five to 10 year time frame. I've known enough infertile people to know that to some of them, it's a terrible curse. It's a terrible blight on their lives. If we can do this properly and safely, and we can really bring the cost down to being something accessible for everyone, in a 50-year type of time frame, I really think there's a possibility that this could become the default way people choose to have children. The aim here isn't to convince everyone that this is the way to reproduce. I think the aim is to give people the option to have children this way if that's the right decision for them.